10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right, everybody. Hello, and thank you for being here. This is Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier, and I am on the No Sound Bites Allowed podcast, which you can find on the Exceptional Conservative Network. That's right, the TECN TV Network. And I'm happy to be here with you on this Saturday, June 1st. It's a great day, great weather out there. I hope everyone is enjoying it. Uh, and at the same time, I hope you're enjoying the show and you've come in to check us out. And we'll be here from 12 until 2 p.m. And I look forward to seeing everybody. Please remember, you can contact us. You can call into the show at 607-242-9247. You are able to reach us on Twitter at the MV Consult, or you can reach us on Facebook. And of course, there is the chat room for the program itself. And we will be watching all of those for your comments because you are the biggest part, especially on Saturdays, to be able to speak with us and let us know what's going on. So there's a lot of things I want to cover today, a lot of issues that I want to address, uh, and I, I want to, it's so much news. And literally right up until about five minutes ago, I was researching and double checking some of the things that we're going to be speaking about in this program. And uh, I wish that it was all great news and everyone would be happy. That's not necessarily the case. And there's a lot of sad news that came out, especially late yesterday. Uh, there was a lot of news announcements uh, about Virginia, Virginia Beach, and what's happened down there, another mass shooting in the nation. And, and it, it's kind of sad because we hear about these things and, and, and they're horrible events. There's not nearly as many as we think there are, but they are existent and they do happen and they are important, but it, it's just troubling. It's very troubling to hear about each and every one of them. And I want to talk about that, about gun laws, about these mass shootings, because my position is, and maybe you agree, maybe you don't, uh, and I'd love to hear what you think, but I think the problem is we need to get to the root of the issue, which is what causes someone to believe that the only answer they have is to go out and kill innocent people. And we see this from a lot of different aspects, whether it's a school shooting, whether it's uh, some other event, what's doing that? Now, sometimes we know the answer to that. In some cases, like in San Bernardino and in Orlando, Florida, we know it was because of religion, that there were religious fanatics that went out and they believed that the answer to kill innocent individuals was because of their religious belief. And any fanatic is always wrong. Any fanatic is always wrong when they make the decision to go out and just kill innocent people. Because that's just, there is nothing right about that. And, and, and I think we can all say that we disagree with that. But then it gets a little bit murkier. When you step away from the religious fanatics and you go into people who have political beliefs and they're doing it because of that, like the uh, Scalise shooting at the baseball field in, in D.C. If you're talking about the kids in Islamburg, New York, who went out and they were planning to bomb um, four kids, all under 20, that were looking to go out and bomb Islamburg, New York, because of that politics and also because of religion. That's terrifying, and that's another category. In fact, um, it was 538.com did a wonderful article about this many uh, a year ago saying that there's about 38 different reasons and categories that we see of why people do mass shootings, which tells us that there's no one universal thing other than from what I can determine, and that is why is someone making that decision? That whatever reasons that are motivating them, you know, they 
feel like they're being bullied. They don't like a religion. They don't like people who don't have a religion. They have a political point of view. Whatever their reasons are, they got fired from a job. Whatever their reason is, why is it that their answer comes down to, and therefore I must kill innocent people? That's what we need to solve. If we want to stop mass shootings, which exist around the world, and America does not lead the world in mass shootings, which is some misinformation that has been promoted a lot by major media. Uh, America is actually somewhere around 60th. Um, but if we were to seriously put a dent in that, to slow that down, to stop that, we have to understand what is it that motivates that. And there's also the category, of course, of gang violence, which often spills into mass shootings because of the randomness. And we only need to look to Chicago to see that. And in Chicago, just last weekend, there were, what, 30, 39 people shot, seven people killed over the Memorial Day weekend, which is similar to almost exactly the same as what they had in 2018 and 2017. And they have every gun law that exists in the nation in force in the city of Chicago. The most restrictive place to own a firearm and yet the deadliest place in the nation with thousands, somewhere between two to 2,500 to 4,000 people being shot with hundreds being killed, you know, three, four, 500 people being killed every year. It's one of the deadliest places in the world. And they have every gun law you could possibly imagine. Which brings us back to laws do not protect people. Not from the criminal, not from the deranged, because they don't care about laws. So this whole emphasis, like the red flag laws that are out there, that are supposed to protect people, that are supposed to make you feel to be safer, and in fact are making you feel safer. There's a big difference. You're not, you're not in fact safer, but you feel, or some people feel safer. But at the end of the day, it still hasn't stopped the root problem. That some deranged criminal individual says the best answer is to go out and kill a bunch of people. That is troubling to me. And as long as we have lawmakers and politicians who are not addressing that concern, we're going to have really crazy events. Events like what we have seen that have taken place on Friday, May 31st, in Virginia, in Virginia Beach. And we're talking about specifically the Virginia Beach shooting that killed 12 people. The gunman also was killed. And as is the policy of this program, we're not going to mention the name of that shooter. They don't deserve that. They haven't earned that. They, their infamy does not give them fame with us. And we're not going to mention their name. But we do know about the shooter in Virginia Beach is that this individual was 40 years of age, a black male, uh, a person who was known in the community, had been a public speaker, worked for the government. Uh, there were, had no arrests in their history, had no notices in social media, no outbursts, no declarations. This isn't political. This isn't religious from what we can understand at this moment, although it's just about 24 hours later. But from what we can tell at this moment, there's no indication. And so many of the laws that we've heard throughout the nation, red flag laws like they have in New York, in California, in Chicago, uh, many of the bills that are restrictive on who can own a gun, how you can own a gun, how many bullets you can have. Uh, none of that really applies here because none of the trigger warnings that we're told will protect the average citizen. You will be safe if you give up your right to own uh, a, a certain type of rifle. M many people misname those rifles and call them a military firearm or an automatic rifle, which is completely wrong. 
completely misunderstanding the function of the firearms, completely using Hollywood movie definitions for what is a firearm and what they're capable of doing. Let's throw that out. This individual down at Virginia Beach, none of this applies to him. He didn't use, like many cases, of shootings and firearm violence in the nation, didn't use a, a rifle. In fact, that's about less than 12% of all shootings in the nation are done with a, with a, a rifle. And it, we even see more people using, very often, shotguns than rifles when gun violence is being uh, discussed. The majority are with handguns, which is what this individual used. And we know that, and it's going to become a big thing. We're going to hear about the fact that not that just he was using a handgun, that that handgun had a sound dampening uh, attachment, otherwise known as a silencer, which doesn't make it, it's not a movie thing. It's not, oh, you suddenly can't hear it. This isn't Hollywood. Silencers don't make firearms um, unable to be heard. They don't muffle it slightly, but it's still a firearm and you'll still hear it firing. Um, but he had that attached and he also had extended magazines. These are facts. These are things that we know for sure. He had multiple magazines and those m magazines were larger than seven to 10 rounds. And so you're going to hear a lot of people say, well, if we just got rid of the extended magazines, you'll be safe. You're going to hear people say, well, if we just got rid of the silencers, you'll be safe. And actually, a silencer is a suppressor, to be exact. It suppresses the sound. It doesn't eliminate it. And the answer to that is, and, and the truth is, no, it would not have made anyone safer. The Virginia Beach incident was because this guy went postal. We've heard that before. Someone went postal. We've heard and seen throughout the years individuals that lose their jobs lose their minds, and go to their workplace and shoot and kill people. And that's a problem. And we know this. We know this is a problem, and we've seen it more. It's happened a lot throughout the years. It's not common. But if we're looking at this honestly, and we're trying to find a way to resolve this, the real answer is, you're not going to get the answer from a red flag legislation because he didn't have any indication. There was nothing that said this individual is about to do something very violent. There was nothing on social media. None of his friends or family or co-workers had any indication that he was about to do this. That's a fact. And we know for a fact that he legally got his firearms because he had no arrest record. There was no mental health issue. This is an upstanding citizen in his community that went postal because he got fired. And the problem is he got fired and his answer to being fired from a somewhat public position was, oh, I'm going to use my firearm to go out and kill innocent people. There is the root of the problem. It's not the firearm that he had. It's not the number of bullets that he had available or that he could buy. It's not uh, the suppressor that he had on there. And those are accessories. Those are secondary. If he used a shotgun, if he used a rifle, if he used a, a multiple revolvers, does it make a difference? Because the question isn't that. If he used a bomb, if he used a knife, we still come back to the same root question, regardless if he used a car, box cutters. It doesn't matter the weapon. The question comes back to why did this individual decide that upon losing his job, the only answer that he had available was to say, let me go out and kill innocent people. There is the problem. It's true of school shootings. It's true of mass shootings. It's true of any kind of gun violence of this nature. I don't care where you're looking at. When you have someone that comes to that, it, 
it, I don't care what kind of firearm they had and whether they got it legally or illegally, which we see very often happening that it's an illegal purchase, but it doesn't matter because the question isn't how to, the, the firearm, it's why did he make that decision? And I think we really need as a society to think about that and say, that's the real question. Why did they make that decision to kill innocent people? If we can answer that, I tell you, we would be far and away ahead on resolving this issue. And it's not because of how many firearms exist in America. There have always been more firearms than there have been people in this nation. There are massive numbers of firearms in Switzerland, and yet they don't have the same level of gun violence. It's not the firearms, an inanimate object. And we have seen people go out and do mass killings without firearms, with bombs, with cars, swords, hammers. The question isn't that. That's really a distraction. That is a political game. And if someone is emphasizing the firearm and not what motivated that individual, what answers this root question, you are being deceived. You are being deluded. You are being led down a path for a political gain using your emotions to, to move you into a certain direction. And it's unfair. Because that has nothing to do with what is really going on. That's my opinion. Not everyone will agree with that. But I, I cannot see how not addressing that root question is, any, is productive in any way. And I ask you, when you speak to your politicians, when you speak to people that you know, um, people that you are electing to office, ask them. I do. Ask them. Do you have a law or legislation or anything that will answer the question, why does a person come to the decision that killing innocent people is their only choice? That that's their only means of expressing themselves, that they have to do that. If you have the law that can resolve that, I will support it. I don't care if you're a libertarian, if you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, I could care less. If you can answer that question, if you have a law that addresses that aspect, I'm all for it. But I have not heard that. What I have heard and what you will hear often is people going out there and they are manipulating you emotionally. And I don't think that we're going to hear about the Virginia Beach shooting very much. We're probably going to hear a little bit about, again, gun control. And we're going to hear about people saying, well, there's too many bullets and magazines are too big. And we're going to hear about suppressors. But none of those are really the problem. None of those are the issue. You're going to hear about that for a day or two. And then, this is, then like many of the cases that don't fit a Hollywood-style uh, direction... It's not a military-style firearm. It's not this big beast of a firearm that they want to demonize. This isn't a individual who's politically motivated. This person is a person of color, the shooter. So they're going to shy away from all of this. And this story is going to go away because it doesn't match the profile that is used to emotionally manipulate people. And that's a shame because we should be looking at this and saying, here's an example of someone who doesn't fall under any of the guidelines that are out there. N none of these laws that are supposed to make you safer are working. None of them make you any safer. We have to look at something else. Let's look at the root cause. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm barking at the, at the moon here. But I think that's the answer. That's me. You may disagree. But there's a lot more, and we're learning more about this day by day. But that's what we know so far. And at this point, there's no reason to think that we're going to learn anything different. 
We're not going to get the answer of why he made that decision to kill innocents just because he lost his job. We don't have that answer. Now, um, if you want to look into this, one of the sources I used, and there was many, but one of them is um, the article from USA Today, what we know about the suspect in Virginia Beach shooting that killed 12. I would recommend check it out and see some of the things that I'm talking about, that there were no warning signs and that the laws that you've heard about on gun control fail. Every single one of them fail and do not address this situation. And therefore, we're looking at the wrong thing. When none of the laws are addressing it, we're looking at the wrong thing. We need to rethink how we're looking at this. That's a fact. All right, let's move on. Let's move on a little bit uh, because there's still some other news in the gun rights issue, the Second Amendment issue that we need to address. And I think it's rather important. And that's talking about what we heard about here in Deerfield, New York, in central New York, a different kind of case. And again, the gun rights are a big issue because there was a gentleman in Deerfield, New York, who wanted to protect himself. Two people broke into his home and were attempting to rob him, possibly to kill him. And he warned them. He warned them to get out, to stop. He wanted to protect himself. And what happened is they did not. So he took his firearm, again, a handgun. Again, it's a handgun. So all this question about, oh my God, it's a, it's a rifle. They're, they're automatic. No, they're not. And no, that's not the deadly thing. It, it, it's a handgun. Again, most people own handguns. And he took his handgun for his self-defense of his home and decided to protect himself. This is out by Oneida, New York, um, the, the county of Oneida. And he, dis and he defended himself. And he wanted up uh, shooting about four or five times. And he fatally shot intruders, two of them, who came into his home to rob him and to uh, possibly endanger his life. He had fear for his life, which is a basic aspect of the Second Amendment, to defend ourselves. And when we're able to defend ourselves, we're able to stop intruders from killing us and taking our property and harming us. It's also good for defense, like which is why many schools are having armed resource officers in their schools to protect people and to allow people to defend themselves. That's what the Second Amendment's all about. Whether that's from government or for individuals who have criminal or deranged intent, that's what the Second Amendment is about, to defend yourself. And he did. And that should be the end of the story. Someone broke into someone's house. They had bad intent. They were warned. They were shot. Should be the end of the story. Except in New York State, where they don't like people having firearms, the answer is no. That gentleman, and I will get his last name wrong, but it's Ronald Stolarczyk. He got arrested. He got arrested, believe it or not. And you have to ask, well, Mike, why did that happen? He got arrested because the firearm wasn't registered in New York State. It was his, his father had the firearm, and when his father died, he took possession of the firearm. It was gifted to him, and for whatever reason, he forgot to notify New York State and register it. He didn't take it out. It wasn't running around with it. It wasn't waving it at a school or something. It was in his house. It was part of his home protection. He wasn't worried about notifying New York State because it wasn't part of his life outside of his home. And so, because he defended himself, because he, 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 he defended his home and protected himself, New York State is now going to punish him. 
Not because he shot, not because there, there was a bad shooting. It wasn't that he somehow took advantage of the situation or somehow illegally shot those individuals. No, 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 that wasn't the problem. The only problem is that the firearm wasn't registered. And because it wasn't registered in New York State, even though it had never posed a problem to anyone in the state or anywhere else in the world, no one was, if, if these people did not come in to his home and attack, then no one would even know the firearm existed just like they didn't know it existed in the first place. Well, guess what? Is that right? A lot of people say no. In fact, because he's being, and this is a case that may go to the Supreme Court one day, um, because New York State is punishing him for his right. Let's remember, this is a Second Amendment right. He has the right to have a firearm. We all, we all U.S. citizens, have a right to bear arms. Period. That's our fundamental, absolute right as part of the foundation of the government, as foundation of America. These are inalienable rights. We have the absolute basic right that we can bear arms. We can defend ourselves. So that's at the core what he did. Now, New York State, and we have agreed, there are lots of rules and regulations we've added on to this, but New York State says, okay, you, you have that right, but New York State wants to make money off of it. That's why you have a license. It's, uh, I think it's $600, $800 to get the license, to get the fingerprints and the background checks, and New York State charges you a fee, and New York State makes a lot of money off of this because one in... Uh, one fifth, uh, five million people out of twenty. So one in four, excuse me, one in four people in the state actually own firearms. So that's a lot of money that New York State is making, which is what New York State wants. They want the money. So it's really a question of money in the state, not so much protecting anyone. They have a lot of laws and regulations so that you can charge you lots of money for the state and the state revenue. And this is especially true because New York State is massively in debt and getting more in debt year by year. And so they tax everything. Everything and anything they can, they tax. But I don't want to get into the weeds on that. So this gentleman has been arrested. This is very likely a... And he's a 64-year-old man. So we're not talking about some kid. This is an older man who's trying to defend himself. So when he gets arrested because the state doesn't like that he was defending himself through the Second Amendment as he has an inalienable right to do so. Well, a lot of people decided that they want to help him out. And there is a GoFundMe for him. This is the legal fund for Ron Stolens Stolarez. Ah, I can't get his last name right. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, Stolarzik. Uh, Mr. Stolarzik has a, a GoFundMe with over 222 individuals involved. Um, he's received, excuse me, 215 people uh, in the last two days have gotten involved. His goal, the goal of the GoFundMe is to raise $10,000. They've reached 7500 as of today, June 1st. This was created on May 29th. And congratulations to him. That's to help him fight the... Uh, to make his bond, his bail bonds and help pay his legal fees to protect him because he was trying to protect himself because he was trying to protect himself with the second amendment and so a lot of people are banding together to help him with that and i wanted people to know about that but here's the thing that gets me about this so you may a lot of people may say well i, I don't know if i agree with that you know, and here's the question we should ask ourselves. Is it right to have a law that says you can't, that interferes and objects to the Second Amendment? Second Amendment says you have a right to defend yourself. You have a right to defend your property and your family and your loved ones. We have New York State and some other states that say, no, you can't do that. 
the, that the state government doesn't like that you have that firearm. They don't like that you're able to defend yourself. And they want to punish you for doing it. And they do this in the most deceptive ways. Did you realize, and I don't think a lot of people knew this, that Nicholas Tallarico, Nicholas Tallarico is one of the individuals who was uh, involved in this incident. Okay? Nicholas Tallarico is now being claimed, according to gunmemorial.org, he is being claimed as being a victim of gun violence. And here is the problem with it all. We have an individual who is defending his life, and New York State has now labeled him as a criminal. And the criminal, the criminal who actually caused this entire incident, the criminal who violated someone's home and endangered their life, is now being claimed by some organizations as being a victim of gun violence. There is, I, I say this all the time, that people are being manipulated by the media and by certain organizations for a political gain. And I say this all the time, and this is probably the most clear answer on that I could possibly point out. Nicholas Tallarico is a gun violence victim according to some of these anti-gun groups. This is a person who's a criminal who caused his own death by violating someone's home and threatening their lives. And he's the victim. Him and his, uh, and there was also Patricia and Tellerico, they are the victims somehow because they initiated something. Think about that. Think about that. So that's like saying that the Virginia Beach shooter when he was killed by the police in the gun battle he had, that he is a victim because the police shot him. Would anyone agree with that? Because there is no difference here. Other than, yeah, you're causing the incident that caused you to get killed. Nicholas Tellerico is not a victim. He caused the incident, just the same as the Virginia Beach shooter caused the incident that wound up killing them. They violated the law. They were, well, Mr. Tellerico caused the belief and the fear of death. The Virginia shooter actualized it. But if you wanted to, and you will hear some of the people who are against the Second Amendment, people who have a political objective, who want to manipulate your emotions, and they will turn around and they will use this. They are saying that Nicholas Tellerico is a gun violence victim. That is a lie. That is a lie. And the Virginia Beach shooter isn't a victim of uh, police brutality, white police versus a, a black man, which some will use that. You will hear groups, the fringe left. You will hear people like the progressive leaders of tomorrow or plot. You will hear individuals like Citizen Action. You will hear Black Lives Matter. You will hear Antifa. And they will come out and they will use the emotions here and mislead you. And they will tell you that, oh, these are victims. These are gun violence victims. These are police abuse victims. No, they're not. No, they are not. Put it in context. No, they have endangered or actively killed individuals and they have broken the law willfully and that resulted in their death because of the crimes they were committing. We have to stop playing this game, this victimhood and using victimhood to elicit emotions so that you can be stripped of your rights. We really need to start being honest with ourselves, with our community. And really, let's look at the root of the problem. The root of the problem with Virginia Beach is that the, he made a decision that said, I need to kill innocent individuals for no reason. That is the root problem. We have in New York, in Deerfield, New York, Oneida County, the problem is that Tallarico decided and made a decision that breaking into someone's property, trying to steal that person's property and to endanger someone's life, 
that that was okay. There's your problem. There's the root problem. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Maybe no one disagrees. Maybe no one agrees with me. Maybe people think I'm, I'm out of my mind. I'm listening to, you know, Facebook. I'm listening to Twitter. I'm listening. You can call in. You can contact me on the chat room. Let me know. Tell me if you think that. I just don't get it. I, I want to hear what the other argument is. Tell me how I'm wrong in what I've said so far. I'm going to take a quick break to let some people think about it. And I look forward to your comments. And I want to hear that. And then we'll move on in the story uh, in the show. But if someone has a reason why I'm wrong, why the Virginia Beach shooter, if you think they could have been stopped by uh, limiting the number of magazines, uh, the number of bullets that he could have, or the number of bullets that can be held in a magazine, or that he could be stopped by a red flag legislation that didn't exist, or that there's some justification for someone breaking into your home and, and threatening your life but yet should not be killed because of that action, even when given a warning. Well, you know, if you think I'm wrong on these things, if, if there's something else I'm missing here, let me know. I want to hear that argument. I want to have that discussion because we can't get to the right answers if we don't or if we're not willing to have the discussion and say, here's where my case is. What's the, what's the other side? What am I missing? Throw out the emotion. Don't tell me how you feel about it. Tell me why it's factually incorrect. Because you may not like it. And that's fine. You don't have to like what I'm saying. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. And it doesn't mean that your feelings are more important than the facts. We've gotten to that. Well, let me, let me take the break. And then I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about, well, this and other things. So we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs>
One second here. Good to be back with you. That's right. This is Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier, here with you at the No Sound Bites Allowed podcast. I'm glad to be back with you here. And we're talking about a lot of things now. We started off talking about Virginia Beach uh, and the mass shooting there, the the workplace shooting, uh, the individual who uh, just a sad, sad loss of 12 lives, and the shooter, of course. But we were talking a little bit about that and what is the real root cause, real root problem of that situation. We also were talking a little bit about what happened in Deerfield, New York, and an individual defending themselves and now being punished by the state for having done that to protect themselves legally, and yet they're still being arrested. So we're talking about that a little bit, but I want to take a a different direction now. And I want to talk about something uh, also in the news, probably not getting nearly as much attention as it should. Uh, And that's the question about illegal aliens being able to vote and to be able to have driver's licenses because they're connected. If you can get a driver's license, very often we can see that they can vote. And this is also a problem with the census as well. And they're all kind of connected here and it's all under immigration policy And it's not really being talked about in that way, and we should, and we should think of it in that way. Now, specifically, we know that in California and a few other states that it is legal for an illegal alien to have a driver's license. Okay? And we know that New York State is now looking to have um, driver's licenses for illegal aliens. In fact, looking at the Daily News, the article was the powerful New York Business Council backs a bill granting undocumented immigrants access to driver's licenses. This is in Daily News, and it was reported on May 29th. And you may have seen a little bit about this yesterday. It's not really big news. Now, the group that's doing this is the Business Council of New York State, and they have endorsed what is called the Green Light Bill the green light bill um, that is being proposed right now to allow illegal aliens to be able to have a driver's license. This is a problem. This is a big problem. By the way, if you're wondering, the actual bill that is doing this, and I know no one ever really mentions it, the green light bill itself is the New York State Senate Assembly Bill Uh, There's a bill in the Assembly and in the Senate. In the Assembly, it is bill number A3675A. Or you can go and look at it under the Senate. And the Senate version of this is bill number S1747. And I know that you almost never hear this because one of my pet peeves is that the news media almost never will tell you where the bill is. They never let you get to see the bill so that you don't get to find out what does it actually say? What is it actually going to do? And so I want you to know that you can look this up and we will include the link so that you can check it out for yourself uh, and read it through and get your own understanding of it because politicians don't want you to know what's in a bill. They just want you to hear their, their answer, especially their emotional plea And this way, you can only go by their word rather than what's actually in the bill and what it will actually do. It's it's how the red flag bill got through and didn't mention in there, it doesn't mention the consequences of the bill, like taking away people's families, taking away their children because they can't have a firearm without ever committing a crime. Again, that's a separate issue, but again, it's this is why you don't get to read the bills so that you don't get to understand what is the consequence, what is it going to cost you 
you as an individual, as a citizen, as a member of a state, what is it going to cost you if politicians do this? Because they always say, this is the best thing ever and you're going to be, your life is going to be so much better because of it. And that's kind of what we're hearing from the uh, Business Council of New York. They're saying that this is going to be great. This is a fantastic idea because, and I'm going to quote the article, and it says, uh, and this is from, oh, what's her name? Uh, Heather Brissetti, who is the president of the Business Council of New York. And her reason for supporting this bill is we are supporting this bill because it sends a signal to Washington that comprehensive immigration reform is a necessary business issue and because it's the right and decent thing to do. Now, let's think about that for a second. The bill, the green light, uh, green light bill to allow illegal aliens to have a New York State driver's license, okay, is a Washington, D.C. issue? No, it's not. No, it's not. So this is someone who is using New York State to pass or to try and pass a national referendum. That's wrong. That is against your best wishes. That's against your best interest. That is a violation of you. How dare she? This isn't, if she wants to lobby Washington, D.C., she has an organization, the Business Council of New York, go down and actually lobby Washington, D.C. on immigration reform. Be honest. You support illegal aliens. Okay. If you want to support illegal aliens, people who have actively broken the United States law and actively are avoiding prosecution or punishment for violating the law, and you want to give them a reward for breaking the law, then just say that, because that's what Heather Brissetti is actually saying. She is saying that illegal aliens should be rewarded with the ability to have a driver's license even though they have broken the law and they actively are continuing to break the law and want a reward for it. She wants to reward them for this. That is what we are actually saying here. That is what it is. Now, we hear that they're saying that this is going to be great for business because businesses, if, if these undocumented, they like to call them undocumented. They're not undocumented. They don't have a document because they don't have authorization. They have illegally broken into the nation. Don't get fooled when people say undocumented immigrants. No, no. We're talking about illegal aliens. Not people who are legally in the United States. People who have illegally entered the nation. And they like to use nice wording so you don't think, that, you don't think about the fact that there is a law that has been broken willfully, actively. That you are rewarding criminal activity. Which I have to say, when you think about it from the illegal aliens side of this, why should they follow any law? Why should they follow any regulation? If one law can be picked, if you can pick and choose which law you're going to enforce, why should they be any different? Why should they care? Why shouldn't they be rewarded for breaking the law? I mean, from their point of view, what's the difference? So you have to look at it that way. And I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, this makes no sense. That we want to reward these individuals and they're saying well it's going to be good for business because now they can drive and that means they can work more and they can do better let's stop for a second okay you're saying it's going to be good for business but here's the problem businesses can't by law employ illegal aliens that is a crime so you're saying that we should empower people who have committed a crime and reward them so that a business can commit a crime by hiring illegal aliens who are taking away jobs from regular working American citizens. And most of the, I think it's about 25% of all the construction workers in the nation, I think it's two thirds or a third, I think it's two thirds of all of the illegal aliens work in construction, um, which is about 25% of the workforce of construction and that's jobs that Americans could have. I know most people like to point out, well, they're dishwashers or gardeners or they're picking or they're working in farms. Well, there are other jobs too. It's not just one industry. And we see illegal aliens in many of these industries. 
But the root of it is, and again, if we don't look at the laws from what is the root problem, we will never fix the problem. You will never get a solution to the problem if you don't look at the root of the problem. And I know how they, you know, we, we take a very Hollywood approach to our politics that we want to feel a certain way. People want you to feel good about taking their position. They want you to feel like this is a positive and not think about, and there are consequences here, and that there's an impact here. They don't want you to think about, well, what does this really mean? Because what you're saying is, if you give an illegal alien the right to have a car uh, to drive so that they can go to a job that it's illegal for them to have. They can't have the job. So the Business Council of New York State under Heather Bersetti is actually saying, is actually saying that she wants businesses to hire illegal aliens to willfully break the law. That she wants businesses to hire illegal aliens for less money than American citizens, break the law, and give left fewer Americans jobs. That's what she's saying. That this is the positive, that this is the benefit to New York State to reward illegal aliens and reward businesses for breaking the law actively. That's what she says. Because that is what happens. That is the consequence of what she is talking about. It doesn't feel good because it isn't good. But she wants to make it sound good because this is the right and decent thing to do. According to who, Heather? Who makes this the right thing to do? Because she thinks so? Because her business will benefit from hiring illegal aliens, criminals? Because she can pay them less money? That is illegal to do? So that she can break the law and make more of a profit? And I'm not one against profit. No, no, I, I'm, I'm all for free business and free markets. And I want businesses to make as much money as possible. I have no problem with that. But I do have a problem when someone is being deceptive and they are rooting things in a way to make people not realize the true consequence of their actions. Because what she is saying is the right and decent thing to do is to break the law and to break the law for her benefit, in particular, profits. I'm sorry, I disagree with that. And, and the problem with this law doesn't just stop there. It isn't just that. I wish it were, I truly do, but it isn't. Because the problem continues even beyond that. Now sadly, I went, in, I went over in the last block and so it breaks off, and I want to try and get back onto a regular schedule. So I'm going to be, I'm going to come back to this because we're going to take another very quick. This will be a very short break, and then we'll come right back. But I want to talk about. I just want to finish up this this thought here that we're talking about rewarding people for breaking the law for personal gain, and they are using emotions to take advantage of you without letting you know what the consequence is, and that's something that they're doing. And they're doing this, if you get the driver's license, then you get the right to vote. And we've seen that in many, many states. And that's illegal. And I will prove that, and I will go over that when we come right back. Uh, but we'll take a very short break, and then we'll come right back, and I'll explain what I mean there. <laughs> 